Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at enums or enumerations in Rust and we also take a little look at pattern matching. This is actually one of my favorite features in the language so I'm happy to dive into that a little bit more. Also make sure to check out the link in the description to see the entire playlist of this video series. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, so I've already executed Rustlings Watch in the Rustlings repository. We can see a bunch of errors here. Let me scroll up a little bit. We can see that those errors are happening in exercise enums enums1.rs. And the compiler complains that there is some variance missing for something called message here. And we see that in different places. So let's ask for a hint to see what's going on. Now the hint says the declaration of the enumeration type has not been defined yet. Okay, that's, that's not a lot really. Okay, let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna open up exercises enums enums1.rs. Okay, and here we can see that we have an enum. This is how we define an enum with the enum keyword. It's called message. And then we have a function that just outputs different variants of that enum. Now, for those who don't know, an enum or enumeration is a type that lets you enumerate through different variants. This is quite useful when you aim to group different variants of an umbrella type. So in this case, for example, we can see that we have a message type, but there's different variants of that. One is called quit, one is called echo, one is called move, and another one is called change color. And the problem here is that those are actually not defined. Now, how do we define those? We can do that by simply putting the different variants in here. So it's uh, quit, and then we have echo, we have move, and we have change color. Now, this is a very simple enum with just different variants and nothing more going on there. And that's perfectly fine. And as you can see, we can use the debug placeholder in the print line macro, just as we've seen in other videos before that we can simply output that type as it is. So let me save that and see what happens. Okay, so here we can see that in the output we have quit, echo, move, and change color. This is just the debug representation of these enum types. Cool, now that was the first one. Let me remove the comments and see what's up next. Okay, so in enums2.rs, same thing. We seem to have some variants that are missing, but this time we can see that the enum variations look a little bit more complex. Here we have something that looks like a struct attached to it. Here we see that there's a string passed to an enum type. And here is even a tuple struct passed down to it. So let's see what the hint says this time. Okay, so the hint says you can create enumerations that have different variants with different types, such as no data, anonymous structs, and single strings, tuples, etc. Okay, so yeah, this is actually a pretty cool feature in Rust, so let me open up the file. So here we see we have our same enum as before, just this time there's no variants anymore, we need to implement those. Um, we also see that there is a an implementation block for that enum. So that's another thing that's pretty cool in Rust, you can actually implement methods on on the type. Uh, that's, that's quite cool. Here we have a function call that simply outputs itself, its own variant in that sense. And then we have our main function and here we define a bunch of messages. Here we can see we have move with an anonymous struct, we have echo with a string type, we have change color and quit, and then these are just output. What this exercise is trying to tell us basically is an enum can have, cannot just be a type with different uh, variants, you can actually get a type with different variants that hold values, that hold actual data, very similar to structs uh, for that matter. So let's see how we can do that. So here we have a message variant move and it holds a data type of a struct that has X and I'm gonna say this is I32 and then we have Y which is also I32. So that's how we would define a an anonymous struct on a on an enum variant. Then next up we have echo, which is simply holding a string. We have change color, which is a kind of like tuple kind of thing. So this one takes an i32, another i32, another i32. And then we have quid, which is just still a simple variant. So see how the different data types of the values that they hold are encoded into the variant itself. That's pretty cool. 
Okay, uh, let me see. So this looks good to me. And yeah, this implementation block is fine as well. So let me save that and see if that's going to do it. Perfect, wonderful. So here we can see we have our different outputs for move, echo, change, color, and quit. And they output the values as passed down to them. Nice. Let's remove the comments and move on to the next exercise. Okay, so this is in enums three. And again, we have the same kind of errors going on here, but it seems that we have a state process function that plays a role here. But other than that, it seems to be pretty much the same. So let me ask for a hint. No hints this time. Okay, so I'm gonna go and open up the file enums three and let's Let's take a look what's going on there. All right, so we have another enum here that is again empty. We need to make it wonderful. Then we have a struct point with X and Y. So that looks very similar to the move anonymous struct enum variation type that we've created before. Then there is a state struct, which can take a color, a position, and knows whether it has been quit or not. And then the state struct implements a bunch of methods. So here we have a function change color, which takes a color, and the color is a tuple of u8. We have quit, which just sets quits to true. We have echo, which takes a string and output it. And then we have move position, which takes a point. We know point have x and y. And then we have process and here we see that there's a to do and it says create a match expression to process the different message variants and then further down here we see we have a test and of course we need to make that one pass and here we can see we create a state with a state in this case quit is false position is a certain point and then we have a color and then we call process several times. So in other words, this state struct is indeed somewhat of a state machine, I guess. And the process function is what takes the state from one state to another. And we can see here that the process function takes the message enum with different variants and, and their uh, values respectively. And then we can see once all of these uh, process calls have been made, there's some assertions down here that check whether state color and position and quit have have certain values. So our job is now to take this process function and actually make it so that the test is green. And the to do already tells us that we need to do a match expression. Now this is this is a language feature in Rust that's pretty cool. A match expression is very similar to switch case statements in other languages. Just that um, I would say in Rust, they're way more powerful. I'm going to do another video where I do a deep dive on match expressions. But for now, let's just make this function work. So um, we define a match expression by using the match keyword. And then we take the message that is passed down here. And then what we can do now is we can obviously match the given message uh, to its two different uh, variants. So we can say, for example, let me actually open up the same buffer and the same file and then scroll up here. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to say again, we have our different message variations, we can take them from the test here, we see that we have four of them in this case. So there is a change color, which again takes a tuple of i32, i32 and i32. And then we have our echo variation, which takes a string we have a move variation that takes a point and point is defined down here. So we can just pass it down there. And then we have our quit variation, which is just a simple enum variant as in all of the previous exercises. Okay, so with those in place, we can then go ahead on the left hand side here and say, okay, so when our message that we get matches message change color, we want to do the following. And then what we can do is we give it this fat arrow and then we can either do a single line statement or a multi line statement. I'm going to go with a with a block statement here, a multi line statement in this case, just to make it a bit more clear. Now we know change color actually takes three numbers for that matter. So it's probably the RGB values because it's it's called changing color. So um, let's call them R, G and B. And then what we can do in this case, we'll probably say uh, self dot and then somewhere down here, we have a change color function. So we can say 
self dot change color and then we have to give it a color which is a tuple so let's give it r g b and that should do it now notice how we can access the actual values of the enum variant that are coming with it using this match expression syntax here now then we can have another variant let me scroll up really quick to see the variants we can have another match branch so let's say if the message is of variant echo and then we have access to a message here which is a string then what we want to do is and i think there was a method called echo down here yes we want to go ahead and call self echo with that message and then we have a variant message position which has access to a point struct and here we would say when the message matches message position, we call self dot move position, and then move position takes a point, so we just pass down point here. And because this is a statement without a semicolon here, we know that it is the last statement of this function block. So whatever branch is executed is going to be the return value of that function. So let me save that and see if that's working. Oh, we have a little error here. So let me take a look. So there's a bunch of things going on. So first of all, we have a little typo in our position variant that's here. Then if we take a look at the test, actually, let me open up this on the right hand side. If we look at the test, we see that color is a tuple and change color takes a tuple as well. So I actually implemented that wrongly. We see here that change color holds three numbers but it actually needs to be a tuple of three numbers so let me change that here and then once that is done we need to check every place where we use change colors that's pretty cool now that this is encoded in an enum type we can just search for it and here we see that we need to take those values as a tuple and then we can pass them down to change color we can probably actually just take the whole thing and call it just color in this case because we're not necessarily interested in access every single color value that's encoded in the tuple and that should be it let me save it and see what happens oh there's another one position is still not correct we have oh it's actually not position it's called move duh <laughs> let me fix that really quick so when the variant here is message move that's what we want you know this is where live streams would be great because then you could just chat with me and tell me hey dude you're doing something wrong and then we have some pair programming action going on here but yeah we'll get there one step at a time so let me save that and hopefully still a bug oh yes change color expects a u8 but it got an i32 let's see change color here so here we can see it actually holds a tuple of u8 and not of i32 so that's on me. I'm going to change that to U8 here and there, and that should be it. Okay, cool. So now this is actually a really good error here. Not that all the other errors are bad in Rust, but um, because I made this mistake, uh, Rust is actually pointing something out here that, that's quite cool. So now you see that we have this enum with this quit variant, but in our match expression, let me go back to the code, we see that um, here, we actually only handle three different variants of that enum and not all four of them. Now, Rust doesn't like that at all. And this is what it points out here. It tells us, hey, look, you have an enum with four variants. In this case, there's the quit variant that is actually not covered in that match expression. So in other words, you actually can't write code with match expressions where you leave out certain cases that your code might run into. This turns out to be extremely powerful when it comes to error handling because the language kind of forces you to handle all of your errors. I actually think this is pretty cool. Okay, so let's make that work really quick. So we add another match expression here for uh, message quit. And then we say when quit is called, we want to call, uh, what was it called again? Actually, let me open up the function here on the right hand side. We want to call quit. So we can just do self.quit and that should do it. Yes, finally, it's, it's compiling. Okay, cool. All right, so that was it with our video about enums. Hopefully you've learned something new. Um, I personally really like enums in Rust, especially because you can implement methods on them and because they can hold actual data. Um, that makes them extremely powerful. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the other videos as well. Catch you soon.